Here we are in my workshop and I'm going to show you how to remove, clean and reinstall a Walbrook carburetor. Walbrook carburetors are the gasoline pumper carburetors on most gasoline engines and to show you this how-to technique we're going to use the Hangar 9 quarter scale cub which is powered by a Zenoa G20. Well here it is, the Zenoa G20. As you can see I've removed the engine cowl. It'll make it a whole lot easier for us to disassemble and uh, work on the carburetor. And actually, what we'll do is we'll take the engine off of the airplane off. In this way, it'll be a lot easier to show you the steps. So the first step, what we want to do is remove the uh, fuel line. And you just give it a little pull. And the fuel line comes off really easily. And the second step down here is you just want to get a thumbnail underneath the uh, throttle linkage and pull it right off. And that much, pretty much frees it up. Now we got the engine off of the cub and now we're just going to take the carburetor body off of the main engine and we just use an Allen wrench and loosen these two screws here on either side, this one and this one here. Two, we take the uh, velocity stack off, and there's the uh, carburetor, and there's the carburetor gasket. You can see with this close-up right here that the attachment block, which is used to isolate the carburetor from the engine to prevent heat from building up in the carburetor, you'll see that there's a circle and a couple of uh, holes drilled on either side. And what this does is this allows pulse pressure from the gasoline engine to get into the body of the carburetor and that's what actually makes the uh, pump inside the diaphragm move back and forth to pump fuel. With this particular airplane engine you can actually adjust the position of this carburetor in uh, one of uh, four positions every 90 degree part because of the circle which allows the uh, pressure to get to the uh, carburetor no matter which position that you've uh, got it mounted. So here's our carburetor uh, taken off of the uh, Zenoa G20 and you can see that it has the uh, uh, gasket here on the side and there is a uh, uh, cover right here on this side and it has a single screw right here and that's the side that we want to get into to check to uh, clean and make sure that the uh, intake filter is not dirty or plugged. So we're going to take off this uh, intake cover side and we use the single screw and a screwdriver here from the center. Just loosen it. That's short. It comes off very easily. And then that's the cover removed. But there's a little bit more here to look at. If you see right here This right here, this is the intake filter screen. And the gasoline passes through this before it goes on into the uh, pumping system. And one of the things that will often affect the performance of your engine is that a lot of gunk and uh, debris will get formed here. If you look and you see this one, this one is pretty good, so it doesn't actually need to be cleaned. But I'll show you what a new one looks like. So right here on my finger, you can see here's a brand new screen. And all it takes is to remove the old one and to put this new one in place. One of the things that you want to do also to be very careful is not to use metal. And what I always use is I'll use a shish kebab skewer or something like that to uh, remove the old one and then uh, easily and uh, gently put the new one in place. Using a wood uh, tool like this helps prevent scratching the uh, surface of the aluminum. Also here, you might have noticed that when I took the cover off, there was two uh, pieces of uh, material that came off as well. The black gasket material, which is uh, 
right there in the foreground. And also this piece right here, which is sort of like a fiberglass kind of uh, material. It's fairly stiff. And that's actually the part that makes the uh, flapper valves work. And uh, when you get uh, to rebuilding a very dirty carburetor, these are all parts that you would actually replace. And I'll show you a replacement uh, uh, Walbra carburetor rebuild kit here in a moment. Well, here's the uh, two original um, diaphragm parts that we were talking about earlier. And as I uh, zoom out a little bit, you'll be able to see the replacement parts. They come with your standard Walbra carburetor rebuild kit. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of different in the kit because uh, depending on the size of your carburetor, they use different diaphragm parts. And these are the two new parts right here that we're going to be installing in this Walbra carburetor. So here we go. There's really nothing to it at all. Is uh, we're first going to replace the uh, plastic one. And we're going to place the second one on top, which is the uh, carbu carburetor uh, gasket. Then we replace the cover like that. Put the screw in like that and just screw the whole thing back together. A little bit of a twist on there but not too too tight and really that's all there is to doing that. Now we've replaced the uh, screen filter, replaced the uh, diaphragm flapper material new gasket on and put the top back on and that's it for that side if you uh, take a closer look you'll see there's a second side to the carburetor we'll get into this one next here you see the uh, other parts that come in a carburetor rebuild kit now the uh, first part that we showed was actually the pumping side and the uh, inlet side of the carburetor this right here is actually the side that regulates the fuel flow and makes sure that it's proper depending on the uh, outside atmospheric pressure. So uh, almost never is this side requiring a rebuild. But we'll take the carburetor apart just to show you what's inside. And if you ever have to uh, rebuild a, a damaged carburetor or one that is really, really... Uh, has some uh, bad fuel flow uh, problems. We'll uh, get into it now. Well, to get into the back side of the carburetor, all you have to do is unscrew these four corner screws. To the back cover. And this is the regulator side, and as you can see, there's a little hole right here that lets air pressure into the back side of the carburetor. You remove that. What you have is this diaphragm right here. It fits just like that. And pressure from the air will push that in and out, up and down. And then that right there, as you can see, will push this arm up and down. And in turn, that moves one of the uh, needle valves that affects the fuel flow on this side of the carburetor. Now, once you take it apart and you want to look, because of that hole, there can be some debris, dust, and so forth in here. And again, using one of these skewers or a piece of wood, what you would do is make sure that everything cleaned inside here. You could use a Q-tip also and maybe a little uh, oil to get everything out. But that's really the back side that allows the carburetor 
to properly function regardless of the altitude of where you're flying. So there you have it. That pretty much goes uh, over the uh, simple steps for uh, removing, taking apart, cleaning, and reinstalling a uh, Walbrook carburetor. Uh, to put it back onto the uh, engine, really, it's uh, reversing everything that we've just done. You would use the two bolts and put the uh, velocity stack back on, tighten it back onto the uh, engine. And uh, remember always to just use a snug tightening of the screws and never use a Loctite or other type of thread locker because you can damage the aluminum threads inside the engine. So uh, until next time, I hope you uh, have some good uh, engine performance and uh, that's it. Take care.